Welcome to Rugby Tonight, the best bits. We've got a great show in store for you as we're joined by former England cricketer Simon Jones and Leicester's Freddie Burns. Joining Sarah and I were Ugo Monia and Ben Kay for all the usual Rugby Tonight insight and analysis. Your parents. Now, I've never met them, but I just love them because we always chat about them and, and you tweet about your dad playing rugby. Because how old is he? Oh, he's 58 now. He's 58 and he's still playing most Saturdays. Yes? Yeah. Who yeah, does the, he play for? He plays for Coombe Down. Um, right. The best bit is he sees himself as a bit of the enforcer in the second row. <laughs> but he, uh, he's the first to every breakdown in the first couple of minutes and after that he just chases them trying to get there and by the time he's got there they're over. So uh, it's quite entertaining. Uh, last year the excuse was when we had Saturday games that he was, he was playing so couldn't come and watch and now uh, with the Sunday games we've got, he's, he's too hungover to come and watch. So uh, <laughs> you know, I love him for doing it and fair play to him, really. He got having a bit of trouble, didn't he, on the weekend? Because you can see him there, bottom left. He's the one that's just given the guy on the floor a bit of a cuddle. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, Good. Apparently, apparently the guy gave him a little whack, so it's just nice to know he can still handle himself at 58, <laughs> to be honest. This is Simon, who, through Harlequins, has become the IG Achieve the Extraordinary Competition winner. Simon, it's great to have you here. Your story is utterly inspiring. Just, just tell us a little bit about the competition that you've won and, and why it is you, you won it. Well, yeah, I was fortunate enough to win the sort of IG and Harlequins competition by... The basic premise was just to sort of pitch an interesting challenge. So I thought running across the Namibian desert solo for 160 miles would be an interesting challenge. It's pretty interesting and pretty difficult because it's a, it's a mammoth, mammoth task and a mammoth challenge. But when you can't see, how do you begin to, to prepare to undertake something like that? Well, first you tell yourself there's no obstacles. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Yeah, well, I thought the desert was quite empty. There was just going to be a lot of sand. It turns out there's cliffs, yeah. there's a big boulder fields, there's ravines <laughs> and... It's not quite as easy as I first sort of anticipated. So once you accept there's going to be obstacles, then you sort of the next challenge is to learn to navigate. Yeah. And the way I did that was uh, I sort of created an iPhone app, and I have the GPS coordinates. And a desert race is essentially can be broken down into GPS points. So one point to the next is always a straight line. Okay. So I created an app that helps me maintain a straight line, right. and it works like parking sensors. So if is I go, it beep? yeah. Okay. So if I go too far off the straight line, it beeps, and then okay. I know to. God, come back in towards a straight line and hopefully use that for 160 miles and I'm sure the battery will be fine. Okay, so you went to spend some time with some of the Quinns lads as well, didn't you, um, recently? Um, and we're going to see now their reaction, actually, when you told them what the challenge was that you were about to undertake. Yeah. Nice Hi, Daniel. Hi, I'm Mark. My challenge is to become the first blind person to compete solo in a 160 mile run across the Namibian desert. So you guys get a sense of just how difficult it can be. We set up a little challenge where you're going to be blindfolded. Oh my god. Nice. Fair play. Give it a sec. Nice sorry. You were part of that, that England team in 2005 where finally we saw an England team properly prepared, properly trained and uh, were able to, to, to put the ghosts of, of previous Ashes series behind them. What was it like being part of that? Uh, yeah, it was a team that had been together for four years, five years. Uh, very comfortable uh, environment. Enjoyed each other's company. Um, you know, we, we socialised together as well. So we built that unity up, that built, built up like a, a family feeling in the changing room. Um, there was no new faces in there. Uh, it was just a settled team. And, you know, we had every base covered in the bowling department. Um, obviously, we had Andrew Flint off on the side as well, but we had a gun batting lineup. So we we were at a place where we could we felt we could take on anyone. We've got Francois now via Skype. Hi, Francois, how are you doing? Good, thanks. And yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. Huge congratulations. You've only been in the country about seven weeks, I think, and you've already won a Viva Man of, man of the Month. Um, are you enjoying your time at Worcester? Yeah, definitely. It's been a you know awesome six, seven weeks. Um, Obviously, South African players made it a bit easier to settle in, but, yeah, it's been a great journey so far and obviously looking forward to, you know, the next three years. And you've only lost one game, I think, since you started playing for them. I, obviously, you're not going to talk about yourself, but I was just wondering, from what the lads are telling you, what's, what's changed over the last five or six weeks? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a few small things that fell into place. I, you know, I think, obviously, rugby is not a one-man sport, so... You know, the whole team contributes to that and, um, you know, it's like you saw, it's been going a bit better over the last six weeks. So, yeah, pretty happy about that. 
Dr. Paul Fleming, great to have you on uh, on the show with us. Um, mm. We will explain why we have this mixture of items in front of us. Just tell us who you are and what you're doing at the moment. OK, so I'm Dr. Paul Fleming from Loughborough University. I head up our sports surface research team. Uh, we've been doing this for about 14 years and it started basically from my interest in, in sport and lots of interest in the development of artificial turf and other surfaces and since we engage with a, a few manufacturers or sports company bodies it's just taken off and we're trying to fill in all those gaps in the science to explain how artificial turf actually works. What are the disadvantages you're hearing? Are you getting any feedback saying actually they're causing injuries? Okay so uh, the rugby uh, Premier League, the Rugby Players Association, the RFU are doing injury surveillance. There is a project which is ongoing and in the last two years they've collected the data and compared the Saracens pitch to natural turf and the Newcastle and Saracens pitch last season to natural turf and they are saying from that research which is uh, in, involves Bath University that there are no uh, there's no increase no substantial increase in injuries the number of or the severity of and that is against the backdrop that in rugby the injury risk is uh, increasing slightly it seems in the Premier League yeah. So there's no significant difference. That doesn't mean there isn't the odd injury and maybe you're Ed Slater with a knee. You know, does, th there's bound to be, uh, I think, a few people who will have an injury and blame the pitch for it. I'm not saying they're wrong, but you can imagine that would be the case. So the general research around the world is no significant difference. That doesn't mean it doesn't feel a little bit different. Maybe it doesn't mean it doesn't play a little bit different. Uh, what nobody's done yet is really get good data from the players about their own opinions in a, in a scientific way. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching Rugby Tonight, the best bits, and don't forget to hit subscribe.